we're going to explain a few things. Uh, we have a few gameplay tricks. We're going to create a few situations as well that people have doubts about just to clear up some of the rules as well. The imp. <laughs> this time we're going to be talking about the imp. It's a peculiar monster. And it's a nightmare for the mage and the druid and anyone who relies heavily on intelligence because it attacks your intelligence directly. If I see it and I'm the mage, I want to buy it or eliminate it from the game completely. If someone gets their hands on this, I might not be able to use the magic that I have in my hand because I'll have less intelligence. In this turn, I wasn't able to eliminate the imp or to buy him and another player has played it against me. At the start of my turn, this imp attacks my intelligence. Now, I have a shield, but it doesn't defend me from the attack of the imp, okay? Because it's not health, it's not damage. <laughs> I picked up two uh, magic cards, both with a cost of four intelligence. However, the imp has attacked me. I have five intelligence, so I need to choose one of them to play because I don't have enough intelligence to play both. So I'm gonna use a fireball so I can destroy the imp. But that means I have to discard this card. This is light weapon attacks on monsters. Okay, I'm the cleric and I've got in front of me an ogre, I've also got a harpy. I've drawn a hammer, thunder hammer, which I love because it makes my deck nice and thin. Remove a card from the game. I need to decide before I swing my weapon who I'm gonna take down first. Uh, harpy has a life of two. So I'm gonna attack the harpy first and every any leftover damage is gonna go straight to the ogre. I've got enough life to last another turn. If he survives at the start of the next turn, he's gonna attack me. So. It would be automatically ending my game. So I roll. I've got one, two, three, four damage. Okay, with this hammer. So that kills the harpy. Eliminated. She goes into the discard pile of whoever put her against me. And carried over is two damage onto the ogre. This is when the monster board comes into play. Put two tokens on him. He attacks me at the start of the next turn. But... He's wounded, so I'll only need four. Uh, so if I throw maybe another hammer, or if I get four damage, I'll eliminate him in that turn. Okay, so coming back to this wounded ogre, uh, I've drawn another hammer. And, okay. I've done, with my bonus, and with the attack, I've done eight damage, okay? The ogre needs four to kill him, so the ogre's eliminated, he goes in the discard pile, but leftover damage isn't carried over like in magic and heavy weapons, because this is a light weapon, so it does no damage to my adversary. It's enough to eliminate the ogre, which is good enough for me now, but that's all. Heavy weapons are a little bit different. Using this, I eliminate the use of any other weapons because it's a heavy weapon, so I can only use this. Some heroes have Swordmaster ability, I'm the elf, I don't. It does let me pick up two cards, I hope that I don't have weapons. I don't know, okay. I've picked up a magic and some money so I can buy whatever I need in the market. Okay, so I've got six plus my bonus, seven damage, okay. So, one, I eliminate the spider. It goes in the discard pile of the thief who I'm playing against. I go up. So leftover damage actually travels right through the monster, through the shield, and does damage to the hero, to my adversary. Unlike light weapons, which will only be enough to destroy the monster or the shield, uh, the heavy weapon actually does take effect on the character afterwards. Okay, guys, this is a deck building tip. I've got five cards. Um, I've drawn the short bow. I've run out of cards in my deck. I have a ability to draw another card with this elven short bow. The cards that are played remain on the table. Anything I buy goes in the discarded pile. So for example, I buy this Warhammer. Um, and when I need to draw a card, I can mix it. I might even be able to draw the hammer in the same turn as buying it. Obviously at the end, played cards go into the discarded pile as well. Uh, I'll be playing with Dwarf today. I've picked up five cards. I can drink both of these beers and go in Berserk, which blocks the market, but gives me plus three on every attack. 
So, I've been playing for a while, I've bought some weapons, I've got a nice deck, and I want to do some real damage. But first, I would like to buy another weapon. So, before drinking the beer, I'm gonna buy this, then I'll drink the two beer. I can't access the market afterwards, so it's a good idea to buy first. I throw a dice to see how many turns I go in Berserk. So this is one, I can use the counter, whether it's three turns, four turns. It's one, so it'll just be this turn, because Berserk starts on the turn that you roll the dice. When I attack with this Morning Star and this knife, I have plus three. Next turn, I'll be back to normal. Paladin Defense, level two. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about the defensive ability unlocked at level 2 of Paladin. So I'm Paladin here. I've reached level 2, so that means that for every attack that's done to me, does 2 less damage. For example, someone's used these two staffs, and they've rolled a 6 and a 6. So that's minus 2, minus 2, so it should do 8 damage in total. But for each attack, it'll do 2 less. If I have a shield in front of me, it doesn't make the shield stronger. It only defends my hero himself against damage. Adding expansion. I have a choice when I have the expansions. I can add one. Or both. Putting all the cards into the respective piles. Scrolls with the scrolls, the potions with the potions. If I want to use just one expansion, obviously I use the hero which is connected to that expansion because otherwise it puts them at a disadvantage. I can't play a hero from one expansion with the cards from the other because the cards they need won't be in the deck. Once you've added your expansions, your deck gets uh, gets pretty big, your main deck. For example, this is just one expansion. You can see that there's a formidable amount of cards here. Uh, when you add two, it gets even bigger. Giant Turtle! <laughs> this is the Giant Turtle. It has lots of uses. I can play it as a defensive card for myself. I can also play it as a defensive card for an ally. If I'm playing with the Thief, he hasn't got many shields he can use. He can use the wooden shield and that's it. But I can't help him out by... Boom. He can use this as a shield. Another way I can use the Giant Turtle is to gain experience. I'm Slayer. I've got 80 experience. I want to go to level 2, um, so I'll have more attack. So I can put it in front of myself, kill it, and go up boom, boom, to 120. I can also, if my ally needs 40 to go to level 2 or whatever it is, he can destroy it for experience as well, or use it as a shield. Poisonous creatures. Some monsters have the ability to leave a lasting effect on their victims. However, to be poisoned, to be inflicted by poison, the monster needs to do at least one damage. If the monster gets my shield down, and if I'm in level 2, and it doesn't actually manage to inflict any damage on my life points, I don't get infected by the poison. However, if he does, for example, this Manticore, he inflicts one damage, he leaves a poison. In this turn, he does whatever damage uh, is inflicted, depending on the roll of the dice. And in every turn after, the start of each turn, this poison token takes one of my life points. So I can even have two poison tokens, he attacks me again, and it'll take two life points at the start of each turn. Poison takes effect at the start of the turn. Uh, the only exception would be with the Cleric, who has at level 2 the ability to cure himself by 2 life points each turn. So he can cure himself before the poison takes effect. For example, if I have 2 life points, the poison should kill me. But at level 2 I can cure myself 2 and go back down to 2. 